What's up, everybody? I'm Leo Reyes Rayon. I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. And we're on to Boston with the New England Patriots with uh, the legendary coach Bill Belichick and no more Tom Brady. As you know, Tom Brady is in uh, Tampa Bay. And um, yeah, so now it's like complete real rebuild mode for the Patriots, which we haven't really seen in the past 20 years. You know, how strange is this, man? It's actually a lot of fun. I mean, you get to really see what what was responsible for what in terms of Brady and Belichick. You get to see what um, – obviously, they're both part of the success, but it was a lot to do about the combination of those two guys, offense and defense, and kind of just, uh, just setting up everything correctly and having it execute correctly by Brady. So it'll be now – a very interesting situation. We've had peaks at it before when Brady's gotten hurt with Matt Castle, where they still went 10 and 6, 11 and 5. So that's still a thing. Um, but this team is much less talent than it did back then. Uh, there's just not the same dudes across the board to take a phrase from. I don't know who says that phrase, dude, but that's it's a dude thing. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, with the Patriots. So the- Go ahead. Yeah, so the Patriots, they, you know, as we all know, they, they won the division. They were 12 and uh, twelve and four. Uh, they have four picks in the top 100, you know. So they, they have a, a lot of different needs, you know. I mean, uh, linebacker is one of them, you know, receiver, tight end. They just need, you know, people that can catch the ball and get open. And uh, I know you were talking about another corner, but, like, who – who or, like, what position do you see is, like, the immediate need for them? I mean, outside of, like, quarterback, too. Receiver, tight end, receiver, tight end, receiver, tight end. They have to draft at least two early, um, mm-hmm. or at least two in the top 100. They have four picks, so I would say two of those go towards receiver, tight end. I could see them going – saying YOLO and just going uh, with rugs at 23 if he's there. If he's not, maybe I don't know what they go. They probably still go for whichever receiver or tight end they love, um, mm-hmm. or they go they shock everybody and they go for a quarterback like uh, Jake Fromm, who I think kind of fits what they do. Kind of boring, low risk, uh, execute. If you get if you get the pieces around him, he'll win, which is kind of what Brady was. Which is so it's kind of strange that you lose one guy to a guy that has a upside of pretty much a 40 year old Brady. So that's kind of, I mean, <laughs> that's not going to really excite you. Damn. Uh, Damn. That's, that's, that's fucked up. That's messed up, man. Jesus. Yeah. Well, they're not, you don't, they could just shock everybody and go with like a gunslinger, like uh Jordan love, who knows, but uh, everything we've heard, they love, uh, they love, uh, they love Stidham, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a reason they pulled him after, like, one series when he was playing against the Jets, even though they are up, like, 40 or something, some stupid number. Because they just – Belichick was so dis, – dis, just despised how he was playing at that point with a pick. So they, they got him where they got uh, Brian Hoyer, um, mm-hmm. who, once again, doesn't excite anybody. Basically gives you flashbacks of Matt Castle. So kind of – Goes back with what he's looked at for quarterbacks for the longest time. We got he got spoiled with Brady, but if you look at his previous career, I mean his previous time in Cleveland and in early New England uh, with the Drew Bledsoe was like the one star guy he had. But otherwise, he had guys like Vin, Bernie Te, Bernie uh, Bernie <laughs> Vinny Testaverde and uh, Bernie Kosar. I just combined Bernie Kosar and Vinny <laughs> Testaverde with one quarterback. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that and that team was like, we could do a whole pod on that one. That those old Cleveland teams were a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. you look back at how they were built; it kind of matches up to where he's the current iteration of this team is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, another need that I see is after they lose a couple of linebackers and Jamie Collins and uh, Kyle Van Noy, I see them going for linebacker, but they never go linebacker early. They usually go find guys that failed other places and bring them in, or they draft guys in the middle round. And one of those guys that's kind of a tough, smart guy from a bigger school, and they like to go for these bigger school guys, um, a guy, Malik Harrison, mm-hmm. who who I think would be a good fit for them. Cool, cool. What, what do you see in his game that you like? Or, or Malik Harrison? Tough and smart. I mean, tough and smart, 
Yeah, I mean, that's if you don't have that, you're not a Patriot. So yeah, right, right. Kind of fits the. He's big too, so. Cool, cool. We'll see. How, we'll see how that rolls. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how how good do you see them being next year? So here's the whole thing that, that there's there's serious needs on the offense. There's serious needs on the defense in terms of the front seven. And the one deep, dark secret about Belichick is that he doesn't really draft well at all. He's not done a good job of drafting during the draft. He's found some undrafted guys that can fill in. He's gone and, like I said, rescued other picks from other teams for, like, low-round flyers. And that's fine. He's – his – I would put it this way. His pro scouting person of personnel is much better than – uh, his college scouting, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know. He's found some guys like Trey Flowers in the middle rounds. Is it Trey Flowers? No, no. It's um, who's the guy that signed with Detroit? The end. Yeah, Trey, Trey Flowers. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. It's early, uh, it's early in the morning, y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was mixing him up with a corner from Seattle. There's a, I think yeah, a Trey yeah, Flowers yeah. too there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, mm-hmm. but um. Yeah, that can see they're gonna find guys all throughout the draft, and don't be surprised at twenty three if they just draft someone that's completely out of bounds, but it fits their they 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 are very headstrong in what they believe is a good player. And you look at their corners; none of these guys are high drafted guys except for uh, Gilmore, who's a free agent acquisition. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be because the free agency part is already done. I'm not sure. How much? I don't know. I I think their their floor is pretty much set at nine and seven, ten and six, mm-hmm. eight and eight, just because of Belichick. Maybe eight and eight if something, a couple of bad injuries happen. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's kind of where I see, I kind of see them ending up nine and seven, ten and six. Yeah, right. Me too. Um. Well, well, actually, I don't know, man. Like, I want to say that. Like, I want to say that, but. <sighs> It's like kind of like how, how much do you think Bill Belichick can win like without all these things? And I feel like I should give him the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, when I look at the team, I mean, it's kind of uh, they're in a kind of weird spot, you know what I mean? So I guess I'm gonna say about 500, which I feel very weird saying, you know, right? You know, so you're eight and eight. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I don't know, but right. also, uh, we'll 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 mess with you about it later. When, yeah, when, yeah. When you, they go like eleven and five or ten. I so. know, right? Like that's what I was about to say. Like I also <laughs> just fucking win the division again. <laughs> I mean, dude, fuck all y'all. I don't need Brady. <laughs> How funny would that be, though, bro? Like if they, I mean, they actually win. I mean, would that be surprising at all? Oh no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One other position, two couple other positions that I see are, and this will be later in the draft, are interior D-line depth because they lost a couple of guys like Danny Shelton, Mm -hmm. um, and cornerback because they always draft a corner. That's kind of their their modus operandi is always drafting the corner. So that's kind of where I see it. It's, it'll be a, it's like a days, it's like a whole show, a reality show of life after Brady. So we'll see how that goes and we'll see who gets the credit. It's gonna be it's gonna be a stupid narrative that's gonna be going that oh we can decide who who deserved the most credit for all these wins when uh, obviously it was both of them in different ways but now that you have them separated you're gonna have people in both camps saying oh look at the offense is poo poo and <laughs> and it's because Brady's gone and now uh, but the offense is still great I mean defense is still great everything offense is still good enough so they're winning so screw Brady blah blah blah. Yeah, and it won't be the thing is it won't be New England fans saying it, but it'll be everyone else that decides they need to put their two cents in. Yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I definitely see them picking an offensive weapon. I also seen some 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 people talking about they will pick Kenneth Murray first or Kenny that dude from Oklahoma, the linebacker. Uh, I you know it's kind. Of, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, yeah, yeah. he's really good. I hope to say, hope he gets to the Saints. He won't get to the Saints. I don't think he'll get to the Patriots either. I think he's yeah. going to go, and maybe a Patrick Queen will be there. But mm-hmm. I, I just don't. He's too big, fast, instinctive. Yeah, just a great, last great character. Just yeah, he's not. I doubt he lasts because yeah, there's yeah. no red flags there at all. 
Yeah, right. True, There's true. nothing to have him drop. He, he, I, I see him going probably before 20. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, all right, y'all. That's the uh, Patriots. You have anything else you think needs to be said, man? No, I, I just – be aware that they probably will draft receiver tight end. Probably won't be the first pick just because, based on the record, they've mm-hmm. really sucked at drafting receivers in the first round. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could see them going multiple – at 87 and 98, they go receiver tight end at both places. So they're going to get multiple in this draft. I almost guarantee it because there's just the lack of lack of upside talent there. They've got a couple guys like Nikhil Harry from last year, but hold on to your – Everyone hold on to your hats and hold on to your pants, and here we go. Yep. All right, y'all. Well, it's super early in the morning, and, uh, you know, we're bringing y'all live content, you know. So this is the Raising Glaze podcast. I'm Leo Rays Rayon. I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. And thank you for watching. Peace, y'all. We're on to Miami. Y'all take care now. Peace.